It is Wednesday night. Hallelujah once again. And we are so glad to have you with us. Uh, please go ahead and share uh, that we're out there. Uh, hopefully it's popped up on your Facebook so far. Well, I guess if you're here, it's popped up on yours. Um, but to let people know we're here and that we'd love for them to join us. And I'm going to I'm going to do the same thing right now. I'm doing it real quick because it finally just popped up on mine. And um, that we are out there and we are live. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. All right. Well, it is Wednesday night again, and we're so thrilled to be with you. Don't forget that next Wednesday night, September the 1st, September the 1st, um, we begin um, our study from E.W. Kenyon's uh, Bible study course, The Bible in the Light of Our Redemption. This is about a 37-week course, so that pretty much takes us into, into the end of the school year, pretty much kind of run parallel with the school year. Uh, by next May, uh, end of May, 1st of June, we should be finishing up. So praise the Lord. That's if we don't get behind any. Amen. And, um, but we're looking forward to that. It's, it's going to be a good Bible study. If you do not uh, have the materials, you can order uh, E.W. Kenyon's The Bible in the Light of Our Redemption from uh, Amazon. You can get it from Walmart.com. Uh, it averages about $13.5 there directly from the distributor. It's going to cost you $25. So I would definitely um, take the um, discounted version. It is the same book. There are study questions uh, in there, so for you to study and be prepared for our first lesson, and um, it, you know, like I said, Amazon or Walmart usually get to you in a couple of days if you do not have it. <clears throat> the Bible in the Light of Our Redemption by E. W. Kenyon. All righty, so we're going to finish up tonight um, with the church and her mission. Um, we talked about how the church was established upon New Testament thought along these following lines. One was evangelization. Um, evangelizing is a central core uh, aspect of the local church. We must evangelize, share Jesus, bring people in to be disciple. Um, secondly was the unifying of the saints around the doctrine. Well, I, I guess I should read our main text, Hatna, because this is where this came from. Acts 2, 20, 42 and 45. Acts 2, 42 through 45. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking bread and prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. And all that believed were, to, uh, were together, had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, so that uh, as every man had need. Glory to God. All right. So they had evangelizing, sharing the truth with one another or, and other people. They unified uh, with the saints around the doctrine of the church. There was a unification of the saints around the doctrine of the church. They, you know, they, they came to the point that they were, they were steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Three fellowship, um, koin, uh, koinonia, um, talking about they had a common or shared uh, interest, which is the Lord, not potluck dinner after church on the fifth Sunday, uh, which is fine. You know, that's a get together. But when they talked about fellowship with the early church, they were talking about the fact that they were bonded together by a purpose and that pr around a singular purpose. And that being Jesus, they participated in daily prayers and they broke bread together praise the lord and when we talk about breaking of bread together we're talking uh, more along the lines of um the communion table of the lord and not you know zaxby's every day or chick-fil-a every day hallelujah um which you could get tired of pretty quick i would uh, so i got some here going oh, I could, uh, all right praise the lord and um glory so we're going to come to our last point, and if it makes six, takes us 15, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, we'll, we'll do that. I, I didn't want to try, try to cram it in last week in three minutes. It just wouldn't have done it justice, okay? So the last point or the last um, aspect of the church and its mission is the powers of the coming world, which were mightily active in the early church. 
and should be active in the present church. Should be active in the present church. One was healing the sick. Two, the raising of the dead. And three, victory over demonic powers. Glory to God. In other words, a supernatural church bringing life and deliverance to hurting people. Look with me, if you will, into the 16th chapter of the book of Mark. Mark summarizes, um, gives his doxology uh, of the ministry of Jesus with uh, Jesus' final words in Mark. Verse 14 of Mark, is they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen, Mary. And um, he, he, wasn't, he wanted to straighten them out, praise the Lord. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Let's stop there for a second. Just underline or mark with your highlighter, them that believe. Because it's so important. And so much of the modern church world wants to relegate what Jesus says after this to the original apostles, to the 11 apostles. But he just got through telling them to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Not the apostles, them that believe. This was a ongoing commission. This was a expanding commission. This was a perpetuating commission for the church. Glory to God. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. So Jesus establishes that the authority and the power and the underlining, underlying uh, ability of what they're about to do was in his name the power of attorney to command and demand and exercise what the Lord told us is found in his name. Praise the Lord. They shall cast out devils. Now, better translated from the Greek, um, they shall exercise authority over demons. Okay? Um, there's really, technically, there's only one devil and many demons. Um <clears throat> We use the word devils because the King James used it. But we're to exercise authority over demons, powers, principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Okay? Hallelujah. But we are to exercise, we'll cast out or exercise authority over. Now, when Jesus cast devils out of people, he was exercising authority. They had to obey him, they had to come out. They could no longer remain uh, inhabiting. Um, that body and suppressing the human spirit that was that was the owner of that body glory to God hallelujah they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so here we have the Lord saying as I said, this is the doxology of this um, book, Mark, that wrote using the last words of Jesus <clears throat> that it says, in my name, you're going to exercise authority over demons. In my name, I'm just going to do it this way. In my name, uh, you'll speak with new tongues. In my name, you'll take up serpents. In my name, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. And in my name. You shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So here the Lord shows us a supernatural, power-filled, authoritative church 
operating in his stead, carrying out the, <coughs> the powers of the coming world with mighty action. In other words, the supremacy, the reigning authority of the church. Glory to God. Look at Luke 24. And we can finish reading here in Mark where it says, so, they, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. And they went forth everywhere, preaching and preached everywhere. The Lord working with, with them, confirming the word with signs following. Or as my margin says, with accompanying signs. Hallelujah. Luke 24. And verse 49, he says, And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be anew with power from on high. Hallelujah. One of, us, one of the church. Now, see, this is where um, we get into trouble, you know, like with, with, with Pentecostals, um, tarrying for the Holy Ghost. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've been there. I grew up in the Pentecostal church and, um, I know all about, you know, waiting or tarrying here. I've seen people do it for years. Um, but since Luke wrote that, he also wrote acts and then chapter four, verse one in acts, um, being assembled together with them commanded, they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which ye heard of me. For John truly baptized with the water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And he goes on down in verse 7. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father has put into his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. They were to wait until they received the Holy Ghost power coming on them before they became witnesses unto him. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And so, we, um, as we're in Acts chapter 1, and, and like we were, we were just reading it down there in verse 8, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Verse 22, Hallelujah. It says, and says, beginning from the baptism of John to that same time that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to witness with us of his resurrection. And to a point, hallelujah, two men uh, called, uh, man, Joseph called Bar, Bar Sabbath, who was surnamed Justice, and Mat Matthias. And of course, they, they ended up choosing by a lot, um, I, I believe Matthias. Now, the thing is, Paul was the one that was going to end up taking that place of that 12th apostle. Hallelujah. Amen. In Acts chapter 2, see, Jesus did so many things. And they went forth and they were to share and lay hands on people. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 32, This Jesus hath God raised up. Wherefore, we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has, set, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. So the, the, the Holy Spirit has come. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak in tongues as he gave them utterance. They stumbled out of that upper room. People came out, said, what meaneth this? These men are full of new wine. And they said, we're not full of new wine. See, it's but the third hour of the day, about nine o'clock in the morning. Hallelujah. And, um, but this is that, which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, not on the 12 apostles of the Lamb, on all flesh. Now, remember, they had chosen the, the new 12th apostle. There were 120 in that room. That means there were 108 non-apostles up there. Y'all can't add and subtract, right? There were 108 non-apostles up there. And they all got filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were all speaking in tongues. And they were all turned loose on the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
I said, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And so what you now see in here, they're hearing this and all of them are up there. And these people out in the streets going, uh, we do hear them speak in our own tongue, the, the wonderful works of God. There were 19 ethnic languages out in the street, different. When these men came out speaking in different tongues. About 3,000 people. Hallelujah. And they all heard in their own tongue the wonderful works of God. Hallelujah. They baptized 3,000 people that day. Hallelujah. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith unto himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Amen. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Therefore, let it all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Savior and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Hallelujah. They had to get saved. Repent and be baptized, everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus, and you and your house shall be saved. Glory to God. And receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Everyone get them baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues too. Praise God. Next chapter, 3, verses 15 and 16. Go back up to verse 13. Um then God, back up in 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness, we've made this man to walk. Now, remember, they went to the gate called Beautiful. They passed by. Um, he cried out to them. And Peter, they said, silver and gold have we none, but what, such as we have give thee, uh, give I thee, rise up and walk. He got up and walked. And then they're, they're, they're continuing on talking about this. And they said, why do you think by our power of holiness this happened? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye just, you denied the Holy Ghost one and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. And killed the prince of life, whom God, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So here we have mighty signs being demonstrated on the basis of the resurrection of Christ. And so the early church was, they were no, <clears throat> they weren't timid at all to proclaim the miraculous power of God. They weren't ashamed of it. They were not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. They were not ashamed of, of anything. They were bold with the truth. Can you say amen? They were bold with Christ. There was no shame. They were laying hands on the sick. They were speaking to crippled people. Glory to God. Miracles were happening. I mean, right out the gate, as we you know, kind of say. I mean, it wasn't the thing that built. Man, they opened, they opened the floodgates and went out and boom. Jesus had trained them for three years, or three and a half years, for this moment to turn them loose on the earth, to go and preach the gospel to every creature, to be bearers of good tidings, to be in the church age, which we are in the church age, bearers of the wondrous, working, miraculous power of God to touch humanity and to set them free from sickness and disease and poverty and calamity and all sorts of destruction. The church has to be like the, the, the Acts church, which we are really still the Acts church. Uh, a friend of mine a number of years ago uh, had a teaching uh, series or sermon on Acts 29. 
we are, well, there's only 28 chapters in the book of Acts in the Bible. We're in Acts 29. Hallelujah. We are in Acts 29. We are continuing to carry out the commission of the church, which has not been um, recanted, has not been withdrawn. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so we're in Acts 29. We're continuing to do what Jesus called us to do. We're to lay hands on the sick. We're to cast out devils. We're to raise the dead. We're to work miracle signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Jesus restore the supernatural church. I remember being at, um, oh, back in the early 80s. Um, I had graduated from Rama. Um, Rama Ministerial Association did not exist at the time. Um, you know, we back when I graduated, uh, Brother Hagen and, and Pastor Hagen told us, you know, go get connected to somebody, you know, go do the work for Jesus, stay a part of the Alumni Association, come back and see us, you know. And then about 85 or so, they began, 85, 86, they began uh, Rama Ministerial Association. Uh, but by then, I had been ordained with um, Buddy Harris's FCF, came back to Rhema a few years later. Uh, but, you know, but I remember being at the, uh, the FCF Family Church Conference in Tulsa about 80, about 83. And the theme of that conference is Jesus is restoring the supernatural church. Hallelujah. And Doyle Tucker some of y'all, if you're, you're uh, aware of, of FCF and Buddy Harrison and Doyle Tucker, uh, Doyle was a psalmist. Uh, Brother Doyle went home to be the Lord uh, uh, just a few, quite, quite a few, not quite a few, but just, just a few years ago. Uh, Brother Buddy could preach. Brother Doyle run at the piano and make a song out of a sermon. And uh, at that church conference, he 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 had a song: "Jesus is restoring the supernatural church." The supernatural church, the supernatural church. Jesus is restoring the supernatural church, the supernatural church. And then he went, signs and wonders follow the supernatural church, the supernatural church, the supernatural church. Signs and wonders follow the supernatural church. The Supernatural Church. And I'm sure there's other lyrics to that song that I've forgotten because I don't have a copy of it anywhere. But Jesus will and is restoring the supernatural church where we will allow him to. See, God wants the supernatural church. Amen. If Jesus gave a commission that it was going to be necessary to have signs and wonders following them as they preach the word. We are not better than the early apostles. We need signs and wonders following us to build and establish the church, the church. It is a supernatural church. If we simply try to convince or persuade men mentally <clears throat> to come into the kingdom of God, we will get a lot of conversions, mental assent. Hello? See, we're not to make converts. We use that term all the time. But we're not to make converts. We are to birth believers. We're to have people born again. We're not to have people come and adopt the tenets of Christianity as a religious way of life because you like the teachings of Christ. We're, Jesus did not say. And read it, read what he wrote, what he said. He did not say, except you come and like my teachings and be a convert. No, he said, ye must be born again. No man can enter into the kingdom of heaven 
except he be born again. Amen. Remember Nicodemus? What must I do to, uh, to, be, uh, to be born again? Can I enter the second time into my mother's womb? Uh, are you a master of Israel? Know not these things. Hello? That which is born of the spirit is spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Marvel not that I say ye must be born again. We have to receive Christ. Peter writes and says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You see, you don't have conversions. See, conversions can convert to something else. We had the uh, president of a, um, well, the SCLC a few years ago. Uh, he got into some trouble. I, I forgot it was it was moral or financial or something. And he got he basically got let go from his position. And it wasn't long after that he had converted to Nation of Islam or Muslim being a Muslim something. Completely anti Christ. He had converted. But he wasn't born again in the first place. He may have adopted the teachings of Christ. He may have been able to quote scripture. But you must be born again. Or as I, I think one preacher used to say, born to, again. <laughs> With a D, born to, again. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. And so we're looking at here, we're over in, the, in here, and they killed the prince of life, but they said God raised him from the dead. And that man was healed because Jesus had been raised from the dead. And it was through his name. It wasn't them. The, the apostles, the, the, the Peter and John that were involved in this, said it wasn't us. They didn't say because we're apostles this happened. They said by, any, by some power that we have or by some holiness that we have. This, this happened because of faith. The faith that is by him. Amen. Glory to God. Can you say glory to God? The fourth chapter down here. Um, well, let's look back up here. <clears throat> now, remember, when the chief priests uh, and elders found out about this, they brought them in. They have a questioning session. Why? I mean, you can't be out here healing people in this name of this Jesus. We can't have that. Well, that misses what our power um, structure. I mean, we got a gig going on over here. You know, you're messing with our gig. And um, they were threatened and charged and commanded in verse 18 not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Now, remember what did Jesus say? Go into all the world and in my name you should do all this. Remember? And they came in. What's the first thing they do? You try to shut down using the name. Why? Because that's where the power is. And these men are influenced by demons. But they're the sin hatred. I don't care. They're influenced by demons. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it's right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge you. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because all the people glorified God. Um, for what was done. For the man was above 40 years old in whom this miracle of healing was showed. And being let go, they went to their own company. Man, we got to have a company of believers. We have to have a band of believers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, that stand together. That stand in faith. That are full of the faith and the Holy Ghost who are looking for signs, wonders, and miracles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Who are be, want to be used of God, who are committed to obeying the spirit of the living God. And they went to that company of believers. They went to their band of believers. That's a song by Shekinah Glory. If you've never heard it, bless your heart. You've missed something. Glory. I just found out recently, I did not know this, way back in the late 70s at, um, at, um, Buddy and Pat's church, Buddy and Pat Harrison, someone wrote that song out of a meeting 
band of believers and the Shekinah glory recorded it. And that's what launched their ministry. That song is what is the earmark of Shekinah glory. I don't care where they go or where they sing 95% of the time, the pastor, at the, if they haven't done it during the three, two, three, four day meeting will say, before we go, you got to sing it. And they got to sing band of believers. Pastor Hagan won't let them walk out the door without singing band of believers. I got news for you. I, for years, the same thing with me. I won't let them leave. They got to sing band of believers. I don't care if everybody's in the parking lot. You got to sing it before we leave. Hallelujah. They went to their own company. Hallelujah. And reported all that the chief priests and elders had done unto them or said unto them. And when they heard that, <clears throat> They said, oh, God, what are we going to do? We've been told we can't say that. Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? They threatened them. They told them, no, don't say Jesus' name. <clears throat> when they heard it, they lifted up their voice with one accord and said, now, Lord, or said, Lord, thou art God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David hath said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagined vain things. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth, against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. In other words, Everything, Jesus had to follow out God's plan in order for redemption to take place. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. They were straightly charged. They were straightly charged not to teach or preach in the name of Jesus, not to lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus. Behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness we might speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders might be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus they said they told us not to preach or teach or heal in the name. We're saying give us boldness and stretch forth your hand and heal in the name of the holy child Jesus. They're going to say forget them. You know, they can go take a short, a long walk off a short cliff. Praise God. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And spake the word of God with boldness. Now, filled, they were refilled. They'd already been filled earlier. They got filled again. Got a whole fresh infilling. Oh, that, look at verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Man, that church was like we know the key. Now, the world is telling us to shut up and sit down. The world is telling us that we are, um, I'm, I'm sure they're going to come up with a term, Christogenic. You know, you, you, you people are Christogenic. You're always running, trying to shove Jesus down our throat. No, we're trying to snatch the devil out of you. Get you free. Hallelujah. Well, we don't like that. Well, that's that devil in you talking. Amen. And we got to be bold like Moses and Aaron with Aaron's rod. Throw it down, let it become a serpent. Let the world throw their rods down and watch Aaron's rod eat them up. Amen. Let them challenge us on every turn and we just stand in the greater power and watch God overcome them. He called hell to fall from the sky and burn on the ground as fire. Glory to God. The death angel came when the blood was over them and the lamb was in them. They were passed by. There has to be a restoration of the supernatural power and anointing of God in the church. If we are going to challenge this church, this age of people we're living in, 
We got millennials. I don't even know what to call the group after the millennials. You know, do we have a name for them? Gen Z and Gen Z. All right. They don't know if they're a boy or a girl. They don't know if they're coming or going. They don't know who they are in any way, shape, or form. But you know what? It's because they're searching for a, a significance. They're searching for an answer, and no one has given them the answer because your answer is not in the carnality of the flesh. Your answer is not found in being a girl if you're a boy and being a boy if you're a girl. The answer is not in not being able to identify who you are. The answer is not in bolting up, cutting up, uh, emaciating enough I'm telling you the answer is found in the fact that you are a spirit being and you are lost without hope without God in this world until you are born again and they are there with the church is walking around with this wimpy junk and we've got skinny jean bed head uh, tunic wearing pastors trying to be cool and there's no power and there's no authority and there's no Holy Ghost in demonstration that is setting the captives free that's raising up those that are bound and liberating them through the power of God God. And Jesus has called us to be a supernatural church that when men and women are bound, they can be set free. When they are not, when they are sick, they can be healed. When they are broke, they can be rich. When they are walking around without any answers to life, they find their significance and find their identity and not who they are in the flesh. But they find it in Christ Jesus. Glory to God that now that you, they are in him, they are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Glory to God. We need to have that that restoration of the power and glory of God in the church so that it burns with his power and his majesty and the, the, the yoke destroying burden removing power of God that any human can walk into and walk out of liberated hallelujah now, I don't usually preach on Wednesday nights hallelujah Somebody say glory. glory. I don't know. We, we need an emoticon where you can run around the room. So I know people are out running around their rooms at home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Look over into uh, Acts chapter. Um, four, five, verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all gathered together and one accord in Solomon's porch. And of course, and the rest of them durst no man join to them. But the people magnified them. The believers were more added to the Lord, multiplying both men and women. Hallelujah. Uh, in so much that they brought unto the fourth of sick into the streets, laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. They would get healed. Just a shadow falling on them would raise them up. Hallelujah. And there came a multitude out of the city. I am telling you, I am telling you, when, when, when word gets out that God is moving places, that, that they will show up. They'll come out of the woodwork. And I'm talking about demon-possessed, sick, halt, maimed. I mean, the crazies will come out, hallelujah, because on the inside of those people is a human spirit that yearns to be liberated from demonic power, <clears throat> and they don't know how to get free. But I am telling you, when God starts manifesting and churches start opening up and having the power of God, I am telling you, those people will come out of the woodwork to get there. And there came also a multitude out of the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing six folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. And then, of course, you're going to upset the religious folk. Why? Because religious folk got devils. Then the high priest rose up, and all that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. Hallelujah. Are you here? Glory to God. Look down into 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Our dear Paul writing to the church at Thessalonica. Verse 4. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you had to the, all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where have you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel? 
That is Colossians. I thought I got, I'm thinking, that don't sound right. Went one flip too far. There we go. This makes more sense. First Thessalonians 1 5. For our gospel came not only to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. As you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy in the Holy Ghost. Notice he said that the word we brought was not only in word. Now, we major, we call, you know, call ourselves word churches, you know, um, word of faith, da, 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 da. We just need the word. No, we don't. We need the word. The word is the foundation. The word is the standard. The word is the, articulates the will of God. It articulates the parameters of things going on. But Paul said um, it was not just the word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, there has, they went everywhere preaching the word, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Glory to God. I said with signs following. If we are going to have the revival, and let me, let me say this, folks. America <clears throat> has become so pluralistic and so apathetic. We've elected leaders that are godless for all kinds of reasons other than biblical ones. We've elected leaders who are anti-Christ, well, they go to a church. Look what kind of church they go to. Dear Lord. And we wonder why they light the White House up with the colors of gays because the Supreme Court ruled gay marriage was okay. Celebrating perversion. We had elected leaders fight to kill babies in the womb. And we wonder why there's an apathetic church. We had a president say recently, not, not the current president or the one before, one before that, that America is a pluralistic nation. See, when the, when the church elects people to rule who are anti-Christ, there's a price to pay. There is revival going on in the world. There are places in Africa and in the and, and South America and that I'm talking huge, huge moves of God. One place in Africa, uh, Pastor Hagen went a few just just a few short years ago, and the official estimate was between one and two million people because they wanted to be, they didn't want to be evangelistically speaking. I know the. Um, Missionary who kind of heads that headed that thing up. And he said there was really between three and five million people. We just don't use that term because we don't want people questioning and making, um, you know, trying to prove that we didn't have that many. And us having to fight that uh, easily can prove they have one to two billion. But he said really there was between three and five for a meeting standing outside under joined carport shelters that is an outdoor stand-up church and three to five million people. That's revival. That's a move of God. Hello? In America, sometimes you can get three to five people to show up. You're doing good. But fear not. I said fear not. Because I am telling you, the seed sung by this nation, God will honor. Hello? And there is a remnant. There is a remnant that have not bowed their knee to Baal, that have refused to compromise to a worldly, watered-down message that's being held in reserve 
for such a time as this to be released by the Spirit of God on this nation and bring reviving and a move of God to America that will re revive, uh, that will rival anything we've ever seen. Smith Wigglesworth prophesied that there will be a move of the word of the of the of the word and of the spirit after the um, healing revival. He said, but then there'll be there'll be another revival that'll be the blending of the two that will come to America. It's coming. And there are people who are, who are willing to stand up and be counted as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 2, verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and confirmed unto us that heard him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his will signs wonders and gifts of the holy ghost get ready we might have to adopt that song by the temptations ah get ready because here we come <laughs> amen we're on our way get ready because here we come yeah on our way get ready because here we come never seen a move of god the way that we will it's all right <laughs> Hallelujah. Signs and wonders and miracles, they're out of sight. So twee, twiddly dee, twiddly dum. Look out, sinners, because here we come. Ah, get ready. Get ready. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. My wife says this. Everything's a song. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here's com it's coming. And all we need is it, it doesn't take. You know, the 10,000 member church, it just takes the people, the remnant who are willing to stand up. It, it wasn't all the Sanhedrin. It wasn't the priests at the temple. It was the 120 in the upper room. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That prayed down revival that moved and, and prayed and saw God move and were sent all over the world. And they that turned the world upside down have come hither. Praise God. It's not going to be your mega church of, you know, of, of, um, you know, tunics and bedhead and skinny jeans and cute little smoke shows and all this kind of stuff. It's going to be men and women who walk in the power, the fire, the glory, and the anointing of the most high God that will destroy the yokes and remove the burdens in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we love you. We're going to stop right there because I'm done. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I sure hope y'all enjoyed it tonight. If you're giving, uh, go ahead and do your cash app or your, your PayPal and send it in to Faith and Victory Church. You, you know by now where to do it. Um, uh, that may show up on the screen. may use it as a closing rollout. Hallelujah. But just remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Whatsoever born of God overcomes the world, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here. Faith and Victory Church on site and online. Good night.